Hello everybody. I figured I'd make one more Call of Cthulhu video today. And I upped the settings. So let's see if it's a higher quality than last time. And if it'll work right. I hope it does. Because I really don't want to have to re-record this again. This house is really fucked up. It's unlocked. So the key we got from upstairs unlocked this door. And <gasps> Another key. This should fit the door across the hall. I don't understand. I'm in all of these photos. All of them. There must be some kind of mistake. Why would they want me here? It must be an old case. Something I've forgotten. Some screwball with a grudge, maybe. Think. I've got to think. I'm thinking. I'm thinking, Jack. You gotta give me some time. It's unlocked. I'm just walking around pressing this. It looks like an eye, but the rest of the painting has no real shape. Damn straight. There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. For nutcases, they seem quite literate. Oh, it's X because the action key. These books are really old. It appears to be a private study area. The drawer holds an ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. That's pretty cool. Wait, I need to figure out the inventory button. And I also would like to change the inventory. No, no, no. Okay, the inventory button is I. But I want to change the action button to. Let's see, what's the button that's not used? Oops. I want to change it to Y. No, I need a button that's more accessible than that. How about... Okay, I changed it to shift. Wait, that means... Damn it. That means I gotta change the... Back button. Now it's set up like how I'd like it to be, or at least the way I can use it really well. Whoa. There are sounds coming from this Shit! That did not sound good. Jesus. Well, that's just swell. Dead bodies, and plenty of them. Something dreadful has been going on down here. Seems like these cabinets are used for storing chemicals and medical equipment. Seems like these cabinets are used for storing chemicals and medical equipment. Whoa. What's going down on here? no power. The crystal's still warm. His brain stopped moving. His intestines have stopped moving. Okay, I need to stop looking at all this shit for a minute. This is really freaking Jack out. I need to stop. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm sorry. Wait. His stomach stopped moving. His lungs have stopped ventilating. His heart has stopped. All right, then. Well, we're gonna move on because I don't think Jack likes this room. This tunnel feels like it's gonna collapse at any moment. Yeah, I know. All horror games are the same. Whoa. That's some crazy shit right there. There's no power. Okay. 
Let's see what Jack's got. got. Strange green crystal. Journal. Game time. And warning. Oh. And we have warning. <laughs> Did I just see? The diary of Jack Walters. It's been more than six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. But to me, it was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it. Probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours, only to find me later collapsed on the floor. When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. They committed me to Arkham Asylum, where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and study. I maintained a fanatical infatuation with the occult, delving deep into volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. I was myself again, or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes, and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I am beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years past, that I've told no else. Jack Walters. Uh, hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. I need your help finding a missing person. I don't take that kind of job. D did you get my package? Um, uh, hold on. Notice how he's just completely ignoring this guy right now. He's just... What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Um, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Brian Burnham. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? I never heard of it. Uh, it's a small fishing town on the coast. Not far from Arkham. Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this j Ugh, What the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. Good 
Diary of Jack Walters. <clears throat> new client, February 6, 1922. Night. I have a new client, Mr. Arthur Anderson, the regional manager of the first national grocery store chain. It appears the first national grocery store in Innsmouth was recently burglarized, and its manager, one Brian Burnham, is missing. From what I have been able to gather, Burnham is something of a youth rogue. A friend of the family, Mr. Anderson, gave him the job as a favor. Burnham is looking like the prime suspect for the robbery, but there is, but there are a few things that just don't add up. Not to Anderson, not to me. For instance, why would Burnham force an entry into the store when he had a full set of keys, free access to the cash register, and the combination to the back office safe to misdirect an investigation? If that was his plan, why did he disappear? Following my conversation with Mr. Anderson, I found out what I could, what I could about the ancient town of Innsmouth. For generations, the crumbling seaport and its people have been shunned by neighboring communities. Outsiders are unwelcome there, and there are superstitious tales of a strange element in the town's oldest families. They are of mixed blood, so the stories go. Whatever, there's, whatever that's supposed to mean. The unusual Hicktown prejudice, no doubt. After making a brief visit to Innsmouth, my client came away distrustful of the local authorities. He isn't buying their line that Burnham robbed the place and wants to know what happened to him. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth and tomorrow afternoon I'll be on it. It feels good to have a purpose after five months trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe it's just a, it's the wild story about the town. Or maybe it's just I haven't had a case in so long. What do I do now? What do I click? Okay, I'll see you guys next time.